Hello, and welcome to this Code 3 restoration of the Corgi A40. <coughs> well, full title, A Corgi A40 Farino. Um, let's start again. Corgi Austin A40 Farina. And this is the starting point. Um, where I'm going to be going with it is I'm going to be restoring, making a representation of my family's first car. <coughs> uh, I think this car game was this casting was first released in 1959. It was released with no windows and no interior. So it's one of Corgi's early models. And it's been battered at the front. The bumper's got a big dent and damaged over the top of the bumper. The bottoms have been dent the bottom base has been dented in. Here I'm drilling the base off so we can get into the car and also it enables me to tin bash the base to get it back into shape. And there we are, stripping down, taking the tyres off there. All four tyres are off. And here I'm using a mini interior. Off a mini that isn't going to be restored, it's just spurs. And here I'm tin bashing the base. I'm getting it straight again. The metal nice and flat to the contour it should be in this one. The bumper had a big dent downwards. And here I'm tapping harder than I want to be. So I thought before I damage it. I put some cardboard over and I can hit it harder without damaging the body moulding on the top of the bonnet because it really did need a welt to put it back into position and even then it had been ground off at the top edge of the bumper I have to fill it later on and here I'm filing the bottom of the bumper where he does some misshapen stuff and um, bit battered if you will and here I'm drilling the posts on the base I'm using a 1.7mm drill bit so I can use a M2 sap to put the thread in and the M2 screws to put the base on later. Here I'm actually tapping still. Tapped all three holes. Use oil to lube the tap so you and take it easy so you don't risk snapping the tap. And there we are. The post is tapped there. I'm ready to take the screw and we can see the original colour the original colour of this were an aqua turquoise colour with a black roof but it's not going to be that today somebody's done it in the colour of their car presumably and it's a uh, whilst it represents the car I suppose it wasn't a good job the paint stripper hasn't done a good job as per usual so I'm going to have to resort to my caustic bath and here the casting's resting in the caustic bath and we've filled it with boiling water and here we have the caustic and as you can see it just dissolves the paint there as it goes in the paint's gone the water's gone the colour of the paint 
So rather than peel some paints, it just dissolves some. And there we are, a paint-free base and casting. And here, I'm taking the wire wool to the wire wheel to the casting to get any last bits of paint and buff up the oxidisation. And doing the same to the base. The base will be getting quite a different treating today. It'll be getting more what they used in the factory rather than painting. And here I'm using some water zone to actually polish the body. Get it as smooth as I can to enable a nice smooth paper finish. It's an unusual way for me, I was always taught the wet and dry method and get it smooth so it bonded better, your actual paint bonded better but to be fair I think the quality of today's paints I think that's less of an issue whether it's a shiny surface like that or a rough surface and here I'm buffing up one of the wheels, polishing it. And here, this one, because it's been in the caustic, it eats the alum aluminium the wheels are uh, spun out of. So I actually sand it down with a fine sandpaper to get where it's oxidised off. And then I go in and polish them again. Once it's took the roughness off it, polish it again. Um, we end up with a nice mirror-like wheel eventually. And here we are, there's the body. Ready to start paint. Well, not ready to start painting yet. Have to finish off sorting that damage on the front bumper. Looks like somebody's ground into it with something. So it's going to need a little bit of filling over. And the base is okay there. And at this point, I use a factory, what would have been a factory treatment. I've got my gum blew out again. It's actually used for a uh, weatherproof coating on guns and to give them the gum metal finish and here I'm just I've only gone quickly over it with a wire wool wire brush beforehand and at this point the body's resting on another casting the dinky bev truck and as of all things I use uh, women's acrylic nail powder as a filler does a good job and it's rock hard here I'm filing where I've put the acrylic nail powder on it's basically near and not near as damn as tough as metal it goes on which sounds weird you wouldn't think nail powder would be that tough but it is bloody tough stuff and there I'm putting some primer on and as you can see I missed the colour coat but as you can see it's black and here I'm using a scalpel to remove the paint off what would have been the chrome trims to reveal the polished metal underneath the idea of polishing the body were twofold to give a smooth finish and so I could scrape the paint off so the chrome trim shows up and it does look rather nice
I did catch his little bit just at top of door there. But I touched that paint up after. And here, what am I up to here? God knows I'll be in in a minute. Ah, I'm painting the details on like the grill. Just goes right, I sprayed a can of me chrome spray. I sprayed a bit into a top and used it with a brush. Rather than just using a silver paint out of the pot. And there we are, we've done the chroming. I've done I've used Tamiya clear orange for the indicators and I'm just going in with Tamiya white for the headlamps there we are next one getting done That's the both of them I'm done. And there we are. That's the front end. More or less finished apart from just doing a dot of red for the badge. I can't actually remember now whether it were red or black. But the red mig gives it that little bit more edge. And here I'm doing the red tail lights. When you look round it, I've scraped off everything that was chrome. I've done the boot no, boot handle, boot hinges, the boot badge, the petrol cap, the bonnet trim and the two wing trims and the door handles. I've scraped the paint off them so they look like chrome. And here I'm treating the replacement screen to a bath in the Johnson's floor. Uh, floor shine. And here I'm buffing up the gum blue so it shines up. Always has a bit of a matte finish, but if you buff it up, it comes up nice and shiny. And at this point, I'm just buffing up the wheels. The hubs have made them shiny again. After they buff in. And at this point, I'm getting the tyres. And I'm putting them in some silicone dressing. type you use for car bumpers is the silicone gel <coughs> it makes the tyres nice and shiny in this instance I probably made them too shiny but it doesn't distract from the build it's still quite nice Well, compared to where it started, it's awesome to be honest. And here we go. Still in my hand yet, we can't see them yet. But there we go, I didn't show them. Yeah. Here we go, while well, I put the tyres back on the pubs. And as usual, be big me tucks are in the way. And here, I'm putting the interior. I'm using some. Well, I started off using umbral crystal clear, and I weren't happy. 
and I resorted to super glue to attach this to the window unit and the window unit into the car not something I normally do but this time that's how I approached the problem and here I'm starting to assemble the car the front wheels went in and the base has gone back on and I'm using M2 screws with washers to screw the base back onto the body when I get round to it come on lad we've not got all day there we are that's another one in and after that we went for the front one did the front one but anyway here's where we started a somewhat battered bruised badly painted player one and needing some decent care and attention to it and it's I've detailed it more than it would have been from the factory and made it look more like our family's first car well technically second but the first one I ever remember but it was the second down the road the first family car we had was a Hillman Husky but anyway here's where we finished up an Austin A40 in black and uh, looked a very nice car really they did only a tiny thing I even remember the registration it was LEP 177 and it ended its days on a junction I was sat in the back and an Ilman Hunter hit the front end and ripped the front end off it they estimated his speed about 70 mile an hour but it made a total mess of car luckily I was sat in the back drawing I just heard the bang, looked up and nonchalantly got out and went what the fuck happened there? <laughs> so first crash I in and I didn't even really notice it I just heard the bang and walked out but we're at a very nice ending point with it and a nice tribute to our first family automobile so to say anyway if you've enjoyed please subscribe to all my subscribers thank you and I'll see you in my next video bye for now and take care